What's up guys, we're back with another Marvel Legends review taking a look at two figures from the recent wave or waves, I suppose, of X-Men related figures that we've gotten for the Fox movie. So we're finally getting Fox Marvel Legends. And of course, I have to take a look at the Wolverine figures. So we've got our tank top Wolverine and then we've got our uh, jacketed Wolverine here. So they're very similar figures, so I figured we'd take a look at them both. I'm not doing every single figure when it comes to these Fox releases, but there were a couple that I knew I had to have, even though I routinely am not a movie figure guy. So we've got these guys here in slightly larger than normal packaging for a single pack release. The boxes are a little bit uh, wider, a little bit deeper. You've got the figure there in the window. You've got kind of a grayish steel blue motif uh, for the overall box color with the X logo. Wolverine name down there. You've got artwork that runs down the spine. And then the back of the box is just a larger shot of that same piece of artwork for each figure. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go out of the packaging. We've got our two Wolverine figures. These are very similar in many, many ways. They share a lot of parts and they are quite swappable when it comes to some of the accessories as well. Of course, one of these, uh, this one right here was an Amazon or still is an Amazon exclusive figure. And then the other one is a, one you should be able to find at various other retail outlets. But these are pretty fantastic. I'd say that just right out of the gate, I lean more towards the tank top figure as being my preferred of the two, but these are both really solid figures. And you know, like I said, I'm not routinely someone that buys movie figures just because I always prefer the comic look, but I'll be damned if I do not absolutely love, just like everybody else, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I mean, when you think about Wolverine, there's a good chance this guy might pop into your head because he has been the character for so, so long. I mean, he is just tied to Wolverine in so many ways. And I think these figures capture that really, really well. So let's take a look at both of them. They are, again, very similar, but there are some key, key differences when it comes to articulation between these suits. We're going to take a look at uh, the Amazon figure first, and then we'll, we'll get to the uh, jacketed figure over here. Now, as far as moving this guy around, he does employ some of the, what do they call it, the Invisipin technology. So this is the more advanced figure of the two when it comes to Legends. That's why I wanted to talk about him first. So to start with, of course, the head, he can look up a little bit. Not too much, but honestly, it works well enough. He goes down really far. Tilt side to side is really nice. Full rotation. You've got arms that go out at the shoulder. They, of course, rotate all the way around. They are ratcheted as well, too, so that does kind of help. And then you've got your butterfly joint there. We've got a bicep swivel. We've got double-jointed pinless elbows. Look at that range. It is fantastic, and it is very seamless and very pleasing. So, again, very happy with them employing this because it just looks so much better. You've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. We've got an ab crunch that goes backwards and forwards really good so you can get Wolverine into those, you know, nice hunched positions. And then you've got your waist twist. Legs go out about that far. They kick forward all the way. Backward only slightly. And then you've got your thigh cut in there. We've got double jointed knees. These still have pins, but they, they kick back all the way. You know, he can kick his own butt like Robo likes to do. And then you've got you've got actually rotation uh, within the uh, the ankle down here. It's hidden underneath the pant leg. That joint itself rotates. You've also got rocker. Of course, the pant leg does kind of get in the way a little bit. And then you've got hinges down at those ankles. Uh, that is also a little bit impeded by the uh, the jeans because they just sort of flare out and they cover that joint a little bit. But he is still very easy to pose. He is a very dynamic as well. You can get him into some really fantastic positions, uh, specifically thanks to how far that ab crunch goes down. And then of course, the great range on those arms. Now, aesthetically speaking is kind of where they get me with this figure though, because this is a great example of a figure that is kind of basic, honestly, just in terms of overall approach, because at face value, it's a guy in a tank top and jeans that happens to also have claws, you know, maybe take those out. It's just sort of a standard guy. But the head sculpt coupled with the face printing is just top notch here. They have absolutely done a fantastic job of selling the Hugh Jackman Wolverine. I mean, it's it's almost uncanny, no pun intended, uh, how good this looks. So at its base level, again, standard guy, tank top, 
He's got his dog tags. These can be taken off if you want. Uh, metallic silver. You've got a little bit of sculpt on the tank top, so it has some texture to it. You've got the blue jeans down here, which have the printed design on them as far as kind of the, the wear. And then you've got the, the belt buckle here. Standard sort of uh, boot feet. And then you've got the pinless arms. There's no paint on the pinless arms as far as shading or anything like that. Uh, no hair either. But he still looks really good. He very much has that uh, Hugh Jackman musculature. Very, very jacked. Again, just like the man is in real life. And then he has bone claws in the box. And these are implemented differently. They, they kind of peg down into the hand instead of pegging into. Instead of just going straight in, they peg down. And they stay in a lot better. They were not warped in the package by any means. Sculpt on them is really good. There is paint on it to give it kind of that yellowy look uh, that, that the Bone Claws have in the movie. And I think they look fantastic. This is one of the few examples when it comes to Hasbro Wolverine figures that I don't feel the need to replace them with metal claws that I've gotten from a third party, like uh, Can of Beans is where I get them generally these days. But I think these are good enough out of the box that there's really no reason to. They sit in there really well. I don't feel like they're gonna pop out sizing is really good and then of course they also just look a lot better than what we're used to seeing with a lot of the comic book figures now all of that said and done the star of the show for this figure is undoubtedly is undoubtedly this head sculpt because not only is the sculpt itself really well done the paint is just applied so well. Everything about the photo reel uh, just oozes Hugh Jackman. He's got kind of a furrowed brow. He's got a little bit of a, of a rough expression on his face, so he certainly doesn't look like just blank stare uh, type of expression like we get with a lot of figures. He certainly does seem to have a little bit of emotion to him, which I do like, uh, so it's not just some sort of vacant expression on his face. The hair is really well done. There is some kind of light brown dry brushing in there to bring out the sculpt against the dark brown brown of the plastic and then you've got the beard which is really well applied but ultimately it's all about the likeness and there's no there's nothing more to say they got the likeness perfect with this figure i really don't see any reason to ever want a more expensive version of a hugh jackman figure this is just so well done for the price point that it's 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 tremendous they did a great great job with it and honestly it's only superseded by the fact that the extra head sculpt in this box at least to me looks even better. So of course that means we have to talk about accessories, and he doesn't come with like a tremendous amount, but he comes with pretty much all you need for Wolverine, especially this instance of Wolverine. So we've got the extra head sculpt like I mentioned, and this one is just it's just perfect for me. This very much gives off that movie Wolverine vibe. He is incredibly angry. The hair is even more kind of uh, slicked back a little bit. It certainly looks a little bit more in motion. And then the expression on the face is just incredibly well done. It's all about the expression, more of that photo reel. And again, sculpt is fantastic. Paint applications are really good. But it, it's, it's just a, it's a competition between a really good head sculpt and then one that I think is just a little bit better because I like the expression better. Uh, they are both really well done options when it comes to heads. And then we've got extra hands for this figure too. So like I said, he comes with the, uh, with the bone claws in the box, but of course he has his adamantium claws as well, and these are just separate hands. So it's the same set of hands again, but with the adamantium claws. And these do come out, so you can pop them out and you can have the ports in his hands, but they just still, they peg down into the hands instead of straight into, and they look fantastic. I really like the shape on them. They do seem to be a little bit different from what we're used to. The color is really well done, and again, it's another instance where I do not feel the need to replace these. They came perfectly. They are not warped. They aren't askew by any means. They look great out of the box. And uh, yeah, I wish they all were like this. So I've had great luck with this particular figure when it comes to the claws on both sets of hands. They look great and you'll be able to get a lot of mileage out of these because they they definitely seem to perform a lot better than what we're used to seeing uh, with the majority of comic book Wolverine figures. Now next up we've got our jacketed Wolverine figure. And this one is, again, very similar. There's one key difference with this figure is that he doesn't have pinless arms. And then, of course, they have different accessories and just sort of a different loadout. But they are very similar. They basically have half of the same body. So to start with, we've got a head uh, that can look up pretty good. He can look down really good. You've got nice tilt and then full rotation, of course. The arms go uh, way out at the shoulder this time around, and then they do rotate. He does have a butterfly joint that's hidden really well under that jacket. You've got your bicep swivel, 
We've got double jointed elbows. They still have really good range, but of course they've got pins. These are, you know, brown pins on a brown arm, so it's not too bad in terms of the aesthetics. And then you've got hinges and rotation on that wrist. We've got the same kind of, uh, of, of ab crunch here, so he goes backwards. Of course, the jacket is going to stop him a little bit. He goes back about that far. He goes forward really, really well, though. You've got your waist twist again, and then legs are the same. So they kick out, they kick forward, they do kick backwards. You've got your thigh cut there, and then we've got our double jointed knees. You've got your rotation within the uh, the cuff of the jeans, you've got rocker, and then you've got hinges. The legs, the feet, all of that, they are exactly the same uh, on this figure. But he is very, very similar overall. The one big difference is, of course, the fact that he has a jacket on that does get in the way a slight bit. And then he's got our standard style of arms with pins. But he still moves really well. There's not a whole lot to complain about on this guy. Uh, he's very standard Marvel Legends, but very poseable nonetheless. This guy, though, is, of course, very different when it comes to the looks. So this is an entirely different look for Wolverine. And, of course, he has a much, much more expressive head right out of the box this time around. So they kind of changed it up when it comes to uh, packaging them. And then, of course, what the options are when it comes to just sort of your build for the figure. So you've got the, uh, you know, the kind of plaid shirt here, which is really well done. The paint is very clean and crisp with the tank top underneath there. And then you've got some exposed skin up here. Very clean. I don't have any issues with the paint on it. I mean, it looks good. Everything's really straight. No fuzzy lines, none of that stuff, none of that nonsense on there. The jacket does have a little bit of dry brushing. And then you do have some paint down here along the bottom, uh, kind of the rim. You've got the zipper that is, that is sculpted and it looks good. It hangs really well and it flows nicely into the sleeved arms, which again have even more paint, more dry brushing on them uh, to bring out some sort of just wear and tear on there. So while of course the jacket does get in the way a little bit, it's it's minimal at best, honestly. It works really well for this figure. And it's again, you know, a look that I'm, I'm very familiar with when it comes to Wolverine, at least from the movies. Like I said, though, he is the same from the waist down, but he is a little bit different at the same time. While the sculpt and the idea is the same, the colors on the, on the jeans are are actually not the same. The other figure is a slight touch lighter blue than these jeans. So, you know, if you were to put them right next to each other, you might notice a difference. You won't notice it under the heavy lights that I've got, but you'll notice a slight difference. And then you've got the, uh, the kind of printed, uh, pattern and patina that's on the pants here. And then just the standard boot feet down here. So he is still similar from the waist down in terms of sculpt, but the colors are a touch different. Not that it truly matters, I'm sure. And then he's got the uh, clawed hands in the box as well. These are the same hands that you can swap out with for the tank top Wolverine. So more of those same new great uh, clawed hands. Again, I really dig these. I think they work really well. Aesthetically very pleasing as far as color, shape, size, all of it. This is, this is definitely going to be my preferred uh, look for claws right now when it comes to Legends because these just trounce everything that we've gotten when it comes to the comic book stuff. And then up top, you've got a very unique head sculpt here. And I do think that on this particular figure, there's a little bit of Hugh Jackman that might be a touch lost in this expression, but at the same time, it's obviously him and it still does look very good. So he's, he's clearly screaming. This is a lot more of an angrier expression, even more so than the extra head on the other figure. And it is sculpted really well. He's got a much different hairstyle this time around because it's slicked back, uh, kind of windswept. And then you've just got a lot more paint detail this time around because of the uh, kind of furrowed brow. You've got some heavy paint on the eyebrows and then you've got the mouth open with the teeth and all of it's really well done. I do think that there's just something that's a touch a touch off. It's it's minor at best, really. It's, a, it's not even a complaint. I'm not sure I would even consider it a, a nitpick. It's just something that sort of sticks out when I compare the two. But overall, it's a really solid looking figure. And if you want a really expressive head sculpt for Wolverine, you can certainly go this route on either figure figure because the heads are 100% swappable. And then just like the other figure, when it comes to accessories on this Wolverine, it's an extra head and an extra set of hands. And for this figure, he looks like he has the same head sculpt that the other Wolverine has, the more neutral with a slight expression, but this guy has actually got a little bit of a smirk going on. So the mouth is sculpted uh, just slightly different, as is a few heat features here and there. But the big thing is, of course, that he does have a little bit of a smirk. And then you've got a different hairstyle this time around as well. So just like the, uh, the screaming head, 
with the hair kind of slicked back. This one is also kind of slicked back as well. I think this one is a touch more Hugh Jackman-y compared to the other one, but at the same time, they are so very close together. This one is just really... Uh, really good. Honestly, this one might be my preferred head on this figure, whereas the more expressive head is my preference on the other one. So you've got you've got a lot of options between these two figures if you you want to mix and match those four heads. And then you've got an extra set of hands, like I mentioned. But these time this time it's just a set of fists, which I intend to likely never use on this figure because it's Wolverine, and I always go with claws, even to the point where I didn't swap them out. So you've got a set of of regular fist hands on this figure. And then as far as a quick size comparison, I'm not going to go into much detail. I figured the best comparison here would be to look at Comic Wolverine next to the two mo movie Wolverines. And you can see that they are about a head taller, which makes a lot of sense in comparison to how tall Wolverine is in the comics versus how tall and how much he scales with other characters in the films. Of course, taking into consideration Hugh Jackman's actual height, because he is certainly uh, not a short dude. So I think this works really well, and it's nice to see uh, them sized up next to each other because you can tell they they absolutely seem to dwarf comic book wolverine uh, despite the fact that they truly aren't that much bigger but they do all look really nice in a row so at the end of the day, I am really, really happy with these figures. You know, I'm not one to buy a lot of movie stuff when it comes to uh, Marvel Legends. It's never been my thing. But X-Men stuff and Wolverine in particular is something that I do have quite a fondness for. I'm sure most folks who watch my stuff know that already. And there's just a lot of nostalgia with this particular version of Wolverine. I mean, again, like I said... Hugh Jackman is so integral to the character at this point that it's hard to separate the two uh, from one another. So it's nice to finally get something like this from Hasbro, and I really think they knocked these figures out of the park. I'm not going all in on the Fox Marvel Legends stuff. There's only a handful that I truly think I want and need, but these two are at the top of the list for sure. I still think that the, the tank top figure is my preference of the two, but both are really, really solid and are going to make for a great addition to uh, what's become a pretty solid collection of Marvel Legends Wolverine figures over the years. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends movie Wolverine. So let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.